How are you doing? This is John from John's Long Box. Okay, I'm continuing the Marvel Vault and we're jumping into the 1980s. Okay, first I got to talk about this picture. This is a uh, John Byrne, Terry Austin, John Byrne doing the pencils, Terry Austin doing the inks, and Chris Claremont wrote the issue. They're like the, uh, the holy trinity of X-Men, if you ask me. Everything you know about the X-Men came from this, this run. Okay, a run being uh, the same art team on, on, on a comic. So like the, you know, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, Terry Austin, there, there would be a run, that's a classic run. Okay, this is the 80s, some classic Spider-Man. Okay, this is again X-Men, this is Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, the Dark Phoenix story from, uh, again, that classic run of uh, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, Terry Austin. Days of Future Past, a one-issue story that just has been echoing throughout X-Men history f forever. And then uh, John Byrne left, uh, Chris Claremont still writing, and uh, it's uh, Dan Green is doing the artwork. I thought Dan Green was a lesser artist, but still, still, still pretty good. And John Byrne left the X-Men and he went to the Fantastic Four. And uh, while this wasn't his first issue, this was the... Uh, the uh, anniversary issue, the 20th anniversary of the fabulous Fantastic Four. It's hard to believe that it was only 20 years when it just seemed like it was my entire life at this point. And uh, one of the things that John Byrne did was he tried to uh, bring the, the the Fantastic Four back to its roots, and he kind of made Johnny Storm look younger and you know very uh, Kirby inspired. He he and he has this classic look on the on the thing's face. He he to me is the defendant of Fantastic Four artist. Okay, this is a uh, uh geez, I can't even think of the name of the team. It's blanking out on me. X not X Factor, yeah or or X Force. Okay, John Byrne doing the uh, Alpha Flight. I already reviewed this, so I won't be spending a long time. This is John Byrne doing uh, the Hulk. So apparently this is uh, a John Byrne. Or is this John Byrne? Okay. Daredevil. The classic run. Electra dying. This is the Frank Miller Daredevil run. That, oh, the death of Electra. Just, just a, a great... No, nobody... Nobody saw it coming. At least I didn't. Okay. You can see Frank Miller's, the way he draws his penciling is just getting better and better. I, he famously uh, was rejected over and over and over and over again. And I think it was Neil Adams took him under his wing and gave him pointers and helped him. Okay. This was uh, when Frank Miller returned to Daredevil. He did Born Again. And uh, Dave Macchiuzelli, th I think. Dave Macchiuzelli only did something like 33 issues of, of comics in enti his entire career, and he's such such an influence. This is John Byrne doing She-Hulk. Again, he's all over. When it comes to the 80s, that was that was his era. He he dominated the 80s. And this is uh, 1979, so they're just going back to She-Hulk because the, this comic was canceled, and it was brought back as a John Byrne. He wrote and drew, and I think he even colored and lettered it. And uh, it ran for a few issues. Then he had a, a, a dispute with the editor. And he, he was just a prima donna at that point, and, and he just left. And then I think they went like 25 issues without him, and he came back. And then he just told the readers, forget anything that wasn't me. <laughs> you know, just he, his ego was getting to his head. And it kind of backfired because uh, he became like poison. Nobody wanted to work with him for a while. This Silver Star and Moebius, a French artist, uh, just he he's a living legend also although he died but uh so I guess he's not a living legend anymore again we talk about epic illustrated started in uh 1980 um here we go this is a uh, captain marvel this is the captain marvel it, who was played by Annette Bening in the movie as you see a little, little different but uh this is marvel he started out as a villain. I told, I think I talked about him. He, uh, Stanley, squatted on the name to get the name Captain Marvel when when the trademark ran out. That DC let it lapse. 
so they jumped on it and now uh any new you know shazam his real name is captain marvel he cannot say they cannot say the name captain marvel on the cover of their own comics so they have to call it shazam but marvel died he had cancer and here he died but surrounded by all his friends he greets death thanos so it ends if, if you, anybody who reads the comics, you know that Thanos' real motivation was the love of the personification of death, which I thought made him a scarier and more determined villain because he could never satisfy death. This whole kind of making him half of a hero or whatever in the movie, his motivations just don't make sense in the movies. In the, in the comics, his name is, his, the name Thanos means death. He was obsessed with death. He became so obsessed with death, he fell in love with the personification of, of, of death itself, and he wanted to become the greatest killer in the history of the universe to, in order to please her or get her to notice him or whatever. And, of course, as long as something is alive, you can never satisfy death. So I thought that just made him a, a scarier villain in, in, in the comic books. In the movies, I, I think they missed the boat. And here is, of course, is a Spider-Man's black costume, which became Venom in the in the Secret Wars the debut I thought it was a lackluster comic again you know how I feel about Spider-Man's costume okay Stanley I, um, I Mark Ruinwald and Tom DeFalco okay he became an editor-in-chief after Jim Shooter and Mark Ruinwald uh, famous writer uh, I'm blanking out on stuff that, that he's done this is John Romita drawing uh, Peter Parker, Mary Jane's wedding, and Howard the Duck up here. This is the Spider-Man balloon that went into the uh, Thanksgiving parade. Howard the Duck, this is a promo for the movie that's coming out. This is all the stuff that's going on in the 80s. I mean, Marvel was at top of its game, big publicity. The No Prize book, I guess I should talk for a second about No Prizes. A No Prize was a... If you know people would write into the letters pages and point out mistakes and errors and whatever and continuity problems, and uh, it wasn't enough that you point out a mistake. Stanley was notorious for saying, you know, I have a bad memory and mistakes happen. But then a lot of the writers would would uh, explain the mistake, why it wasn't a mistake, or come up with some explanation for it, and then you, they would win a no prize. And a no prize was no prize. Um, it was just basically hey, you win a, a no prize. So it was just bragging rights. And then I think they would actually mail you an empty envelope to contain your no prize. So that became like a collector's item. And I no, I've never won a no prize. This was another Moon Knight series, Mark Spector of Moon Knight. The, the, the classic Moon Knight series was canceled and they brought it back. Just that's the classic Moon Knight costume. There's a little insert of Power Pack. I remember at the time I was too cool to like Power Pack, and I just you know shrugged it off as kid stuff. And I went and bought the back issues. I got to say it was pretty solid. I I did enjoy it. The Nom. I remember the Nom was a was a big deal, a big media thing. The Nom was a a comic book about the Vietnam written by a a, pe a man who was actually in the Vietnam War, and the original run was a uh, was Michael Golden, just a great artist. Um, and I remember working at a comic book store at the time, and uh, Vietnam vets would come in for the first time to, to get issues. Like, people were buying like 60 copies at a time. You know, I, it was the first time I noticed speculators buying, buying comics. Okay, we'll go into the 90s because this, this is short, the 90s Punisher. Now we're going to see all the uh, stuff that people kind of make fun of. But uh, honestly, I think they, they, they make it a worse deal than it is. But the, the 90s were noted for uh, big muscles and, and uh, huge splash pages and, and everybody had pockets on their costumes, stuff like that, but it wasn't that bad. And here, here it is, uh, Todd McFarlane, if you remember, I talked about him. He started the DC on Infinity Incorporated and uh, you know, you could, you could see he had talent, but he didn't really come to his own until, look at that, Spider-Man. Spider-Man sales were actually kind of logging, uh, lagging. That's why they did uh, stunts like get him, get married, and they hired actors and actresses, and they brought them out in Shea Stadium, and they got married during like the seven-inning stretch and stuff like that. And then Todd McFarlane came, and just the sales were selling way over 100,000 copies a month. 
and then the next big Marvel, uh, so Todd McFarlane dominated the, the 90s, you know, just like John Byrne was the 80s, and then this is the new wave, Todd McFarlane, and the other, of course, the other guy, uh, Rob Liefeld, see there's his signature, Rob Liefeld, uh, I think he, he, uh, he, he created like Cable, he created uh, Deadpool, and uh, he was given the New Mutants, and I th uh, it was a Lu Lu Louis Simonson, and uh, Rob Liefeld, and then what was it? Issue eighty-seven, the debut of Cable. And uh, to be honest, I never cared for Cable. I just I I, I like Rob Liefeld, but I, I don't like his creations. I thought the, the what what does the name Cable mean? I don't know. And here, Wolverine. You know, we're starting to see the the traditional '90s proportions. The head's kind of small. Look at the biceps bigger than the head. You know. Here is X Force, Rod Blyfeld. You know th this was his super team, with Cable, tiny little head, muscles bigger than the head. You know everybody in a three quarter profile. You know Rod Blyfeld was a. If you ask me, he was got too big, too fast, and he didn't really develop his craft. I I I do like him. I think he uh, he's a nice guy. And then this was a relaunch of X Men with uh, Jim Lee, and this this I think they printed a million copies. This was just phenomenal, big seller. And then uh, a new Todd McFarlane was given his own Spider Man, you know, so he was pulled off the Amazing Spider Man and started with a uh, Spider Man number one. And I think this was like a, a million copies also. Todd McFarlane, uh, just just like I said, the '90s were were his time. Okay, cards. Ghost Rider cards. I don't know what this is. The stock certificate, 1993. Okay. Okay. Trading cards in the 90s. I remember the trading card craze. Oh my God. People used to come to the comic store buy boxes and boxes of, of, uh, of cards. Okay. Oh, the Clone Saga. Yeah. Um, if you remember one of the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man with Carrion, Carrion was a, a, a clone. A failed clone of Miles Warren, who was the Jackal, and then he uh, somehow got the genetic tissue of Spider-Man made clones, and it just lasted too long. It was like the first the fans just rejected it, caused a big problem, and then Spider-Man's clone was Ben Riley, and Ben Riley was supposedly the real Spider-Man, and uh, it, it you know I I could spend an hour just talking about the clone saga, and it still would confuse everybody, and then. Uh, they did a, a started out in what what if Mary Jane and Peter Parker had a child Mayday Parker and uh, Spider Girl, and it was a big hit. And then they just made like a, 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 a another run set in the future. And this is another comic I was too cool to get when it first came out. And then I went and bought the back issues. It was pretty solid. And here's Venom. You know the costume itself was 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 sentient and became the villain Ven Venom. And then. This happened. Marvels. This took the comic book world by storm. This was uh, Kurt Biasick and Alec Ross, and I, this was like really the first time I saw Alec Ross uh, come come across my my time. And uh, he would do these photorealistic paintings of, of of a comic book, like as the Green Goblin, that's Gwen Stacy, and then Kurt Biasick retold the the Marvel story from from the beginning. In the eyes of a normal human photographer, uh, writer of, from the Daily Bugle. So he's just a human going through all the Marvel history. Uh, it was a great series. They had, it, they had sequels. And then Alex Roth did the same thing with to DC. You know, went to DC to do a, a, another like retelling. It was, that was just great, the Marvels. I, I, I would say just get that. You could get the trade paperback. Heroes Reborn. Okay, I forgot about this. I'll come back to this. We're just looking at these. The Marvel 19th Annual Report. I have no idea what that is. Okay. Oh, the bubble burst. This is the end of the Marvel. Marvel was... You know, they were just printing money at this point. But a lot of people were just buying the comics and not reading them. They're called speculators. They would just buy them thinking like... You know, just thinking that they were going to sell the comics for fortune. Then when they started selling them, then they weren't getting any money. Literally, like you were ordering a hundred thousand copies, or, or they, they were printing up a hundred thousand copies of a particular comic, say Spider-Man or whatever. And then the next month, people were only buying thirty thousand. So 
everybody was stuck with 70,000 extra copies. So then this, the month after that, the store has only ordered 30,000 and Marvel lost two thirds of its sales and within two months and boom, they, they, they almost filed for bankruptcy and it was just bad. Layoffs happened, Marvel had to restructure. And this was the result of that. One of the Heroes Reborn, they licensed out all their characters to all the image. So at this point, the major talent for uh, for Marvel left Marvel and, and formed Image Comics. I already talked about that. How like Rob Liefeld and uh, Todd McFarland and uh, uh, why can't I think of the other names? But so many of them just just left. Eric Larson. They just left Marvel. These and these were the big sellers. These guys were were, were just. And, and they wanted higher royalties, stuff like that. I mean, they, they had an argument. They, 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 comics that were selling 30,000 copies a month were now selling 100,000 copies a month, and they were just getting page rates. They, they wanted royalties and more incentives and, and bonuses and stuff like that. So they went to Image and formed their own stuff. That's where you get Spawn, Wildcats. I talked about Gen 13. You know, Jim Lee left. Everybody, everybody worth leaving left. And Image was just, they were the new hotness, and they were outselling Marvel, they were outselling DC. And then Marvel was hit with this, this speculator bubble bursting. They were filing for Chapter 13. And the guys from Image said, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do Marvel. So they came and they redid all the Marvel characters in their Image style. So the fan, all the big selling at the time, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four. Um, they, they went and they were in like this pocket universe and restarted. And uh, again, this was another thing that was too cool because I was too loyal to Marvel. But... Uh, I, I thought what they did with the Fantastic Four was pretty good. The Avengers I didn't particularly like, but I liked the Marvel's Reborn Fantastic Four a lot. Eleven, And then that fell apart because they were a bunch of kids and I, they started bickering. And I think it lasted 11 issues and the 12th issues of, of them were just, just nonsense that I think they were just like slapped together. But the Fantastic Four, I just wish they had finished that. I thought it was so good. And then this was Rob Liefeld took over Captain America and the kind of got goofed on for the, the tiny little head the, the fist that's as big as his head you know this 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 image right here is 90s comics that that people goof on you know that people remember and rob liefeld was was made fun of for years he his, his name was mud because uh all the cool people like oh look at rob liefeld he, he doesn't know basic anatomy and stuff like that and he you know you you distanced yourself from him in the past five years or so uh People look back at him more fondly, and like I said, I think he's a nice guy. I, everything I read about him, he seems like a p good guy. Just I don't think he deserved all the hate. You know, this is kind of kind of goofy, but you know, he seems like a decent guy. Okay, and then Marvel had to restart. Joe Casado was hired as he's the the editor in chief at this point, and they they restructured, they pulled everything together, and uh, they hired Kevin Smith. You know of uh, Ball Rats and, and uh, uh, Jay and Silent Bob, and he did a Daredevil run, and Joe Casada did the pencils. This was a solid run. This this was really, really good. I, I, I You know, you could get the trade paperback of the Kevin Smith comics, and I think Kevin Smith's strength is, is his dialogue, but uh, definitely not directing, but his dialogue, he, he could write, okay? Uh, just this, this, this was just good. This, this, and this was, and then Marvel. Well, his, his, again, Stan Lee's out in Hollywood promoting. I think this was the, uh, the theme park. Okay, Marvel Mania in Hollywood. Yeah, Stan Lee was, like I said, he was always a little embarrassed by by what he did, which I don't think, I don't think he should have been. He uh, did a lot of good stuff, but he was always trying to court Hollywood, like that would legitimize him. Okay, and now we're coming into the the, the two thousand, and I think that Daredevil run was very influential for the next 10 years because uh, Quesada, who was the artist for that, he became the editor-chief and uh, now they're, they're, they're getting a little bit more serious, a little bit more focused and this, this was a, a dead girl from the ecstatics with, uh, what's his name, uh, Hugo Girl, Hugo Girl, that's her name, from the ecstatics, why can't I think of the artist, Mike Allred. And who wrote it? Ah, oh, that's going to drive me nuts that I can't remember the, the writer. And Marvel kind of got focused. They got a little bit more like pulled back, more realistic. They got 
they, they started wooing back better talent. And then they started the ultimate line, which was a, a they, they thought there was too much continuity, too much people had to know, and it wasn't newbie friendly, which they had a, a point, if you ask me. And they started the, the ultimates. And if you ask me, the ultimates was just a, just a pitch for movies. And the Marvel MC universe is just spun out of the, this, this ultimate line. The ultimates was like the, the, this alternate name for the Avengers. And, uh, this, if you ask me, was inspired for the, uh, the Marvel Universe. They even had uh, Nick Fury look like Samuel L. Jackson. It all started from this. And then they, f they also, uh, Hamas and Casada. they, I, I have problems with those two, but, uh, they, for as much good stuff that they did, I think they also did some bad stuff. But they decided to take all the mystery out of Wolverine. He, he you know, nobody knew his real name. Nobody knew how old he was. There was always hints about him. John Byrne always hinted that he was a lot older than than, uh, than he was due to his his regenerative healing ability. Kept him younger, and but but nobody could confirm it. And it was kind of like cool. He was the man of mystery, and then Origin told told everything he wanted to know about about uh, Wolverine. This is a uh, uh, alias. Okay, yes, this is alias. Uh, where the debut of Jessica Jones, um, Brian Michael Bendis created that character, and this this was a, you know, um, I got problems with Michael Bendis today, but back then I thought he was a solid writer. He wasn't such a superstar, so I think he took a uh, editorial criticism, and uh, this alias run she was a, uh, it was supposed to be Spider Woman, Jessica Drew, Spider Woman. And then when he told what was going to happen to the character, they were like, no, 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 you're not doing that. So he created his own character, Jessica Jones. So he could do, I'm not going to get into some of the stuff that happened to her, but uh, let's just say, uh, well, if, if you've seen the uh, Jessica Jones uh, Netflix show, then you know what I'm talking about. But uh, he tied her into the Marvel Universe, like retrofitting her in, and he did a pretty good job. And she was just like down on her luck, private detective, you know, and you, and you learned about her. It was, it was a good run. And oh, we're done. I thought there was more. Oh, the, this this some more few pages. The ecstatics. Yeah, Milligan. Peter Milligan. That's right. Peter Milligan. He he wrote Shade, uh, Shade the Changing Man for uh, DC's Vertigo. Uh, he I think he did a, a run on Swamp Thing for a while. I I always liked Peter Milligan. He could get kind of uh kind of out there, and he did ecstatics, which was a uh, uh, early two thousand X Men and. Uh, they didn't last too long. It was kind of like a comet. They 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 burnt really fast and died out just as as quick, and uh, they were just like uh, the new hotness for for a couple of years. Sixteen oh two. This was another like imagination uh, of the Marvel universe, but in the year sixteen oh two, or Captain America was a, a native in, in America. Uh, Peter Parker was a young scientist who who worked for like the Secret Service of her of Queen. Victoria, that was all Neil Gaiman's. Um, it's not one of my favorites. It's okay. And uh, here's Neil Gaiman redoing the uh, the Eternals. That's Icarus, who's played by uh, the older Snow brother, Rob Stark. Okay. Uh, this was uh, Kevin Smith did Spider-Man and the Black Cat series, and uh, he famously did three issues and then took years for the fourth issue to come out. Which uh, I think prompted Marvel to smartly not even uh, start pumping out the first issue until all the scripts of, of a limited series were in. I mean, they got backlash for that. Okay, and this was the 9/11 uh, tribute album, a uh, tribute comic that the proceeds went to charity. Okay, and oh, it's not done. I thought it was the end. I, I apologize. Yeah, this this is uh, the 9-11 comic. Okay, and then the first X-Men movie. Oh, sorry about that. The Summer Choose Your Side. A, a very flawed movie, and it I, it didn't age well. And then one of the most horrific movie mistakes ever. You, you hire William Defoe, and then you this you put this mask on him. Well, the you know the, the Green Power Rangers mask. People goofingly call it. The, the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. So the Marvel movies, you know, before the modern MCU. Oh, God, this abomination. Uh, my Fantastic Four is my favorite, so I'm, I'm still waiting for a, a good Fantastic Four movie. 
you know, the X-Men movies were, were hit or miss. Don't get me started on the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movie. You know, Stan Lee's all happy. Okay. And now we're at the afterward. This is the this is the actual ending. Here's some uh, pow script. Stanley Zowie inking Chick Stone. Wham art Jack Kirby. Ulp lettering Art Simic. Funny story about Chick Stone. I was going to mention it before, and I I, I got I got distracted and forgot about it. But uh, when when all of the writers and artists they worked at the bullpen, they all worked at Marvel. Here's Dave Cockrum drawing Storm. Chick Stone was a ladies' man. And he used to bring women up to the office to, to, you know, to model. He was just trying to pick them up. And, you know, Jack Kirby and everybody else would be taking the job seriously. And Chick, Chick Stone would come walking in with, with some some girl. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's going to model. Uh, she, you know. So the, then, they, to, you know, to be good wingmen, they would have her pose and they would draw her and tell her she's going to be in an issue and stuff like that just so he could chat up some girl. <laughs> and uh, he didn't... They. they he, they asked him to ink, and he didn't know what he was doing at first, and he, he learned how to ink, and, you know, the rest is history. And this is Roy Thomas uh, this, and and Peter Sampson. These, these are the two authors of this Marvel Vault. Uh, he's a comic book historian. I don't think he actually wrote comics, but uh, he, he's more of the literature guy. And he's the this guy's the walking encyclopedia of all things comic book, Roy Thomas. He was uh, hired by Stan Lee... He was the first of the second wave of, of the Marvel staff. The first wave being like the Artie Semek and Jack Kirby and Chick Stone and all the all those living legends. And then as they got older and left comics or retired, uh, they needed new people. And he was the first of of the new. They they called him the kid and stuff like that. And then he became the editor in chief. Just just a solid solid workhorse type of guy, you know. Make mine Marvel. Look at the look at these, just just classic characters, you know. Dracula was a big deal in the Marvel comics, you know, and of course they can't make a MCU movie about him. Okay, and that's image credits, and that's the back cover. And underneath is the DC vault. I'll talk about that some other point in the future. But here you go. This was a rather long one. I'm sorry, but I wanted to finish the series. I thought it was starting to drag on a little too long. A little preview of stuff coming up, and. Uh, Please, uh, please like the videos. Please subscribe. Um, I'm on Twitter, on J Longbox at Twitter, and uh, I have a Facebook book, uh, John's Longbox on uh, John's Longbox on Facebook, on Facebook, and uh, you can email me at John's Longbox at yahoo.com. Okay. Um, hope you like this. Uh, I noticed that there was a big bump in, in subscribers due to uh, Twitter activity, and I would like to thank everybody that did that. That was really nice of you guys. I. I posted a, a picture of my comic book collection and a lot of guys were impressed about it and started uh, passing it along to other people saying check out this guy's comic convention collection he has a, a, a YouTube channel like, guys thank you so much all right all right thanks a lot I'll, I'll do, be doing something new tomorrow bye bye